Well, as 2023 comes to a close, the U.S. economy is ending the year in a brighter spot than expected. With inflation cooling and the expectation for the Fed to cut rates next year, there is optimism that the economy will be able to avoid a recession. Here with what you need to know on the economy this holiday season, we have Aditya Bave, Bank of America Global Research Senior U.S. Economist, and specifically what caught our attention, Aditya, was the fun note that your team put out on the questions you might be getting uh, during the holidays, around your holiday table, and how to address them. And I think that question of, well, what happened to the recession, is probably one that those of us in the, not just in the economics profession, but perhaps those of us who follow the economics profession will be getting. Right. So this is meant to be obviously a lighthearted read going into the holidays, but I think the content is serious. And it's a project that's near and dear to my heart because we as economists sometimes need to do a better job of explaining our thinking to folks who are not economists or don't work in financial services. And so why did we avoid a recession? I think the story here is that the economy was not as vulnerable to higher interest rates as we thought. And a big part of that story is around debt that was termed out, particularly on the consumer side. So if you don't want to use that technical phrase, you can say, well, Look, mortgage rates were locked in for a lot of folks. About 70% of consumer debt is mortgage debt. And a large share of households simply were not affected by higher mortgage rates because they had already locked in very low rates before the Fed started hiking. Mm. Are, you, are you surprised, Aditya? You, know, you look at the economy right now, and as you said, it's, it's proven more resilient than a lot of people thought. We just had a GDP print this morning, close to 5%, yep. sturdy labor market. Are you surprised that people don't feel better about the economy? That's another question that comes up a lot, and I think it's a really important one. And part of the answer to that question, I think, is sticker shock. So the Fed focuses on bringing inflation down, but they aren't trying to make up for past inflation, right? They're not trying to bring prices down to where they were before this big surge in inflation. So when folks go to the grocery store, they're still seeing prices that they were not used to seeing before the pandemic. Same for clothing and many other items. And I think that's had a very negative impact on consumer sentiment. So an interesting factoid, consumer sentiment, the Uni University of Michigan measure, that bottomed out, all time low, not at the peak of COVID lockdowns, but in June of 2022, when CPI inflation was 9%, gas was over $5 per gallon, and we've still not gotten back to April 2020 levels. So sticker shock is real, and it's really an issue for people. Beyond that, I think there's also economic disparities. So the macro data look good, and that's what we focus on. But there are going to be households that are particularly impacted by higher food prices, credit card delinquencies, student loan payments, and so on. So most consumers, when they go to the store when they, not necessarily when they buy gasoline, that's getting a little yep. bit better, but they're still feeling those higher prices, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yep. Um, and so when you're sitting around th that, that holiday table, how do you explain Fed policy to lay people, right? It's not always an easy thing to do. Right, so I think we need to explain that the Fed is trying to strike a balance here. They're trying to slow down inflation. And again, they're not trying to bring prices down because in order to do that, to cause actual deflation, they'll probably have to inflict a lot of pain on the economy. They're trying to maintain 2% inflation while also ensuring maximum employment, right? Which is basically maintaining a strong labor market. And that's a difficult balance to strike. And that's why I think their job is so difficult. Mm -hmm. And so while we have you, Aditya, I got to ask you, what, what is your outlook then for, for the U.S. economy in 2024? What are you seeing? So we're looking for a soft landing, and we recently revised our outlook to something even more benign. We now think that on a 4Q over 4Q basis, the economy will grow at about 1.2% next year. That is a slowdown from the 5% that we just saw, but it's in line with the recent figures that we're seeing for the fourth quarter. It's below trend, but it's probably just fine. Right. Uh, we have the Fed hiking, uh, sorry, cutting rates four times next year, once per quarter starting in March. And we have inflation, the core PC, which is what the Fed watches, coming down to two and a half percent by the end of next year. So things have moved in the right direction. The, the inflation data have been more encouraging than we were expecting. And I think the Fed's reaction function has also been more dovish than we were expecting. So it's the combination of those two factors that has led to our forecast changes. Okay, there's one more thing that's sort of a longer term issue that I feel like is more on 
many Americans' radar, which yep. is the national debt, Absolutely. which you also address in your note. Yes. Um, and as, you know, in the financial media and as economists, we don't talk about it on a day-by-day -day basis. Yes. But it's something that's sort of in the public consciousness. Yes. So how should people be discussing that and thinking about it? Right. So the debt is a problem. The deficits that we're running right now are unsustainable. Probably next year, for a variety of reasons that we can get into if you're interested, the deficit will be a little bit narrower than it was in fiscal 23. Nonetheless, a large chunk of the deficit is because of entitlements. Entitlements are difficult to touch politically, so I think it will be very challenging for politicians to address this problem, but it is a problem. The U.S. can get away with it for longer than, say, emerging markets can, because usually a big component of these debt crises that you have in emerging markets is a run on the currency. And because the dollar is the world's reserve currency, you're probably not going to get that. right? So the U.S. can get away with this for longer, but it is something that eventually needs to be addressed.